Welcome. Welcome back to my channel Conquer the Fear. In this video, we are going to discuss about Spring Boot Kafka interview questions, which are more practical. Okay. So, which are asked in the real IT MNC. Okay. So, we'll be ask, we'll be sharing you the most frequently asked interview questions. Okay. So, whether you are a fresher who is preparing for an upcoming interview, whether you are an experienced guy preparing for an interview. This video will be helpful for you. So please watch this video till the end. Okay. Now, uh, interviewer, when you are trying to go to attend an interview, right? So he will ask you about the basics from Java till Spring Boot. Until then, he will try to understand in your resume if you have written Kafka, if you have worked in Kafka. So he will try to, if the project requirement is about Kafka, they will definitely ask you about uh, whether you have worked on Kafka, what is like internet architecture and other things. On top of that, there might be some of these particular questions which might be asked as a counter question or in subsequent questions. Okay. So the very first question is about, uh, can you explain the flow, how your uh, Kafka works in uh, from your uh, basic Java application that is Spring Boot application to the Kafka and how Kafka is going to consume it, how Kafka is going to produce it. Okay. So what are the uh, components or the architecture in between, right? So you would like to know like your, how your application starts and then start pushing that data, okay? So uh, with respect to the architecture wise, when the user is going to take some action, right? So there will be a producer and the consumer. So Kafka is nothing but a consumer and the producer. So uh, there would be somebody who is going to produce it and there, will, there would be somebody who is going to consume it, okay? And this particular topic, data is stored in some of the topics okay which are uh, under that partition or like you know there will be a server of kafka where this particular topics the producer will be subscribed and the consumer also will be subscribed to it okay so the post based on that once it is pushed the consumer is going to consume and based on that uh, whatever it gets it's going to perform its operation okay so there is a annotation and a configuration which we need to use there is an uh, uh, in order to listen to certain topics right you need to annotate with at the rate kafka listener and you have a kafka topic uh, that is template uh, where we have to send the message to a kafka okay and then after that post that you will have your service related things which you will be uh, uh, adding as a component or something for managing your beams okay so you'll at the producer side when you are writing an application right so you can uh, have a kafka template which is used for uh, sending the messages and then based on that particular user action you can uh, give give the topic name and then the action or the message whatever you want to push it okay so once you send that the consumer's responsibility is to subscribe to the same topic so what is that the listener he will be annotating it itself with the listener okay and then it is going to consume it okay so that can be uh, you know a synchronous process or a whatever process it would be then then you can write consume it and then process is based on your project requirement <coughs> now how would you exactly uh, ensure that once the message processing in the spring boot application right so what configuration are necessary for both the producer and the consumer side now uh, there is one uh, property or i would say you know exactly once means there should be no duplicate there should be no loss of data okay so what happens that Kafka uses transaction and there is an item uh, item potent pro procedure uh, producer over here. So what there is a configuration. So you need to have that particular you know transaction ID prefix given to it. Okay, and then you have to enable your item potency is equal to true. Okay, so these are the configuration for the producer side you have to do. And the consumer side you anyhow have to have that particular listener enabled. You have to give the topic name. You have to give the transaction ID over there. Whatever it is given over there. And then you have to uh, have the annotation at the rate transactional so that you know it is going to handle your transaction. So if there are some DB operations performing in single transaction, it will be taken care. Okay. So this is how you ensure that there, you know, there is no duplicate and no loss. Now, how do you handle the message deserialization? And if there are some potential errors during the deserialization process, uh, when you are consuming it. Okay. Now, there is an error handling deserializer which is going to catch your errors, okay? And there is also a DLQ, DLT that is dead letter topics, okay? 
which is uh, for failing the message fail messages okay so you can have this particular configuration defined so you can define the deserializer the key and the value over there and then you can actually delegate that particular to the some of the json deserializer and then you can use that okay so in the kafka listener you can give the topic name and the group id and then you can do your processing over that in the listener side you can also use the topic uh, like you know dlt and the group id as well okay so which is going to handle your errors okay it will try to see what is the exact error can it uh, you know reprocess that particular failed record or uh, you know the, the the one which is going to deserialize so in that it will retry it now how would you configure multiple kafka consumer in spring boot application now you wanted to process some messages from some same topic but you should uh, there should be some different processing logic right so we can use uh, there is a concept called consumer group id okay so it will uh, allow each of this consumer to produce or uh, process all the messages independently without uh, you know in sync right so you, you can have that particular group id and the topic mentioned over there and then you can actually process it okay so you your topic will be shared and then you know the group id will be different over there okay so this is how your uh, you can maintain a different logic level you can have different implementation and then you know uh, the records will be processed based on the groups now how do you handle a different message format now you might, the, the famous format or the most used is json but if you see when it comes to kafka and then they, you have a lot of millions of records to process avro is the one which has been recently been used up mostly and uh, within the same kafka topic how uh, you can use it okay so uh, in the message header when we are you know uh, there is always a format for uh, uh, what kind of format it is okay so it is json it is avro any other format it required so while deserializing okay based on the format it is okay you can have some topics uh, which are specific to that you know which will be publishing some specific formats over there then you can have your group id over there okay so based on that consumer it is going to consume that it is going to check for the uh, in that particular header section you will have some uh, you know, format information which will check so based on that particular format if it is uh, uh, let's say format is json or it's an avro you can actually check that and then you can based on your lo logic you can deserialize so there is no exception over there how do you configure and use the sp kafka streams with the spring boot application if you are processing the real-time data okay now we can make use of the stream builders or we can actually make use of the spring cloud stream so it which is one of the functional way of style be of beans so you can do the transformation you can do the aggregation you can do the joins over there you only need to do the configuration you can define a class you need to define a bean over there and then you have to uh, have that particular process method defined over there where it is going to take an input as a string builder and then it is going to take that particular topic name details and then you know it is going to convert that particular transformation like you, know, you can apply some group by uh, counting and you can you convert it to the stream to that particular topic okay so that's where you can actually convert it to the case stream now how would you handle different kafka consumer group strategies now one consumer per partition multiple consumer per partition how do you do this particular configuration okay so this is part of the configuration okay you doesn't have to deal with the application code when you're trying to do that so what you have to do is you can uh, for one partition uh, one per partition you what you have to do is you have to use the same group id uh, for multiple instances basically the so kafka will automatically auto balance that particular partition across their consumers okay now if you want to do the multiple consumer per partition then it is not natively supported in the group you have to use a separate group id okay or you have to either increase your partition counts in your uh, server that's how you can do that now how do you monitor the health and the performance of your spring boot uh, producer and also how you consume in the production environment so what are the metrics you going to track up okay now uh, if you have heard of actuator right the spring boot gives you that particular you know dependency there is micrometer there is uh, uh, prometheus there is grafana different tools are there which is used for uh, getting the metrics okay so you can actually you know get the total number of count total number of records lag latency if there are consumer error there are producer error okay 
you can do the actuator and the micrometer dependency using that particular and you can expose the endpoints like you know some health is metrics is there metrics is there you know all other information can be exposed now are you if you are seeing a high consumer lag in the spring boot application what might be the potential causes and how you can troubleshoot and solve this issue okay so consumer lag is nothing but the, you know there is there is some latest uh, kafka offset but uh, the committed offset is way behind right so it is going to uh, check the minus and see that you know how many you know records are still or offset has still has to be processed or you know in order to consume that okay so what might be the different causes because of this slow loss logic what you have written the logic whatever it is so it is going to slowing down your processing logic now there might be two very uh, very few consumer instances already there in your ss server now there might be too many partition for per consumers okay and your garbage collection is you know kind of you know a, a, a starving actually so it is not able to process it right or you know clean up the resources okay what you have to do to fix this is that you can actually first of all you try to check your processing logic how much take it is uh, take it is taking time what are the uh, pitfalls over there or either you can actually increase your instances consumer instances or actually you can do the asynchronous processing with the help of thread pools or you know uh, uh, asynchronous things or what one another thing is you can have to daily monitor it and then actually fine tune your jvm to process those now how do you implement message filtering at the consumer level now uh, we can use the, the record filter strategy which is part of the kafka current, current uh, kafka listener config tree, container factory you have to define a bean you have to that particular uh, container factory then there is a filter mesh factory and then you can actually have this particular uh, uh, you know instance created over there you can set some certain factory over there you can de define the filter strategy like you know you want to skip some some logic over there and you can actually create a factory over there then only those kind of messages which is going to satisfy this particular filter logic over there it will be processed okay that's it the uh, we can implement some filter over there i hope you are able to understand the questions which are asked in the practical i hope this video in this video i have tried to explain the interview questions which you normally don't find in any other videos in youtube okay uh, i'll try to you know gather this information for you from all different sources okay and uh, including myself i have attended many interviews and also i've gathered information from the other people who have recently attended the interview uh, if this video was helpful please share with the needy people also don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell icon thank you thank you for watching